Okay, this is Supplemental Movie Tutorial 2 uh, associated with uh, uh, Nature Protocol's X-ray structure determination using low resolution EM maps for molecular replacement. And here what we're going to do is uh, use molecular replacement uh, to solve the X-ray crystal structure of Cascade. Uh, to do this we need high resolution X-ray data and a prepared um, EM map that we did in tutorial number one. So the first thing we do is just um, uh, go to the Molecular Replacement tab. We want to go to Phaser MR. And then uh, the Phaser mode is Automated Molecular Replacement. Uh, and then here in the Data File field, we want to load High Resolution X-ray Data, which in the case of Cascade is Supplemental File 1. Uh, these things should, are, the unit cell dimensions and the space group should automatically populate. Uh, and um, the high resolution and high resolution for refinement fields, we want to put this as the original resolution limit of the EM map. Oops. <clears throat> We definitely we want to make sure that the output directory is where we want it to be, and we want to define a title of the run. And um, now at this point, uh, we need to modify the phaser run just a little bit because we're using an EM map. And um, what we're doing is accounting for any errors. Oops, that's where I want to go. I'm going to go to the other settings tool. We're going to account for any uh, magnification errors that are in, from the EM map. And we also want to account for uh, solvent, differences in solvent between an EM map and a uh, normally what we use with atomic models. So here you just change the user level to developer and you want to find uh, this uh, section of to for tools, MR refinement, and you want to change this to custom and you want to turn all of these on. Especially you want to turn on refine EM cell, cell scale factor and the maximum number of cycles we'll put as 50. So this will account for any magnification errors in the EM map. And then to account for the difference in solvent scattering between an EM map, which is actually uh, correct, collected more correctly than an atomic search model, we want to change this um, default of 1.05 to something much smaller like 0.3. And we're going to hit OK. <clears throat> now we're going to set up uh, and run Phaser. And so to do this, we need to uh, build an ensemble. This is an ensemble for a PDB. We actually want to add a map ensemble. And so we'll um, remove ensemble one and work with the newly made map ensemble. We'll call this Cascade EM. The reflections file is what we just prepared in tutorial number uh, one. So, and we have provided that for you as supplemental file six folder. I'm going to use the one that we just did in tutorial one. The column labels here should populate. Uh, the RMSD is defined as basically a good rule of thumb is one half the resolution limit of the EM map. So in the case of Cascade, it's four because we had an eight angstrom EM map. Here, the center and extent values that we determined using Coot in the previous tutorial will be used. I've got those right here, the center. Uh, this is going to be the, the actually the center of the cutout. And um, we looked at that and it's positioned at the origin. So it's zero, zero, zero. But the extents of the map will be the same as um, uh, the previous of the original EM map. And so those are recorded here. The extents are 
85, mom 84, mom 96. Okay, here the protein mass and the nucleic acid mass requires that you know something about the macromolecule for which you're trying to solve the structure of. Uh, in the case of Cascade, we've provided all of this information in Supplemental File 3. The, uh, and down here, the total protein mass is uh, 380, 800. And the nucleic acid mass is 19. 19. I guess I could make this a little more accurate. Okay, so now we've um, created a new map ensemble. We need to tell uh, Phaser something about what we expect to be in our crystals. And so here we need to. Um, <clears throat> Uh, fill in uh, the macromolecules that we expect uh, in the in the crystal of Cascade. And um, this is where uh, running a Matthews coefficient calculator to guess how many uh, assemblies you might have in the unit cell will be helpful. I'm not going to run through that at the moment, um, but I have done that, and I expect that there will be two Cascade assemblies uh, in the asymmetric unit of my crystals. Um, each cascade assembly actually has <clears throat> five proteins and one CRISPR RNA. So we need to actually make six macromolecules here. So, and I'm going to, uh, the first one is a protein. And what I'm going to do to make it easier on myself, I'm just going to do the molecular weight. Now this, this is directly coming from uh, this uh, text file, so the molecular weight of CSE1, which is protein, is 55901. I expect there to be um, two of these in the asymmetric unit. I expect there to be four of CSE2. I expect there to be twelve of cast seven. I expect there to be two of cast five. Bump that up to two. Molecular weight of cast five is twenty five two oh eight. I expect there to be two of the Cas6 protein. And there should also be two CRISPR RNAs. And the molecular weight. Okay, and so now we've defined uh, what we expect to be the composition of the crystal. Now we need to define what the um, search uh, procedure is. This is um, upset that I have used a dash in uh, defining my ensemble. So I'm going to hit OK and go back here and uh, fix that to an underscore. And that should work. Okay, uh, I believe that there should be two cascade assemblies in uh, the crystal, or the asymmetric unit of the crystal, and so I'm going to have it search for two copies, and I'm going to hit run. Run now. This will run for about uh, 10 to 15 minutes, after which you should have a solution. Uh, after about uh, 15 minutes or so, Phaser should uh, find a solution with Cascade. It should have placed two Cascade ensembles, and um, this is this results panel is where you can kind of evaluate your results. Um, the LLG is is an important number, and so is the TFZ score. The TFZ score needs to be, or is usually considered, 
when it is above eight, it's considered that you have a correct solution. It, this is also important um, how many solutions you have. In the case of Cascade, we only expected to have one molecular replacement solution. Um, for some problems, something that has internal symmetry like the proteasome, you may expect to have more than one solution because uh, of the symmetry in the, in the protein. Um, but it looks like we have a very nice uh, solution here with Cascade, and it has um, given us an output file right here as an MTZ and um, uh, a PDB that we could look at in Coot. Um, if the TFZ score is low, if it's not uh, uh, above 8, uh, there are a few things you might try. You can go back to uh, the Ensemble uh, panel and you could change the original scale factor from 1 to something else such uh, usually we recommend going in points uh, in um, increments of 0 0.03 so you could try 0.97 or 1.03 uh, basically what what this means what we're suggesting here is that your original map the scale is not correct and it needs to be modified a little bit to get a good solution um, also what you could do is uh, if you think that there might be some uh, some hinge regions or something like that in uh, between the EM structure and your X-ray crystal structure, you could go back to the um, cut out density tool and use a different uh, center and extent to cut out portions of the EM map and use them as uh, Instead of, instead of one major ensemble, you could define more than one ensemble and search for each uh, independently in phaser. Uh, but we have a nice solution, and we're going to use this solution to uh, locate or find uh, NCS-related density in tutorial three.